I'm David Taub here. Hope all's going well, and I hope your guitar and musical journeys are going famously. And today, I have two of what I consider to be the easiest and best kind of hacks, tricks, whatever you want to call it, to spice up your pentatonic scales. And they're very easy to implement, and it's just something that you could use to really bring something fresh and new to your pentatonic scales. Now, pentatonic scales are the most widely used scales across most genres of music. And today we're going to be applying these uh, techniques and devices over a jam track. The jam track we'll be using today is just a simple two chord change. It's just an E minor to a C sus two. So for these examples, we're gonna be using E minor pentatonic. All right, to show you these principles, jam tracks are just an invaluable tool for the practicing musician. It allows you to take what you're learning and apply it in a musical context, in a, you know, as opposed to just playing licks. So if you're just playing licks, which is cool to learn the licks, but remember, if it's not in context, you know, you might want to land on certain notes over certain chords and have a certain rhythm to your playing. You're not going to get that. And if you'd like some killer sounding tracks that I specifically built for soloing purposes, they're wide open, easy chords, click on that link below. I'll send you my jam track coach six killer jam tracks plus two ebooks. I diagram out all the scales so you know what will work over them and why with some things to try. And I also talk about each track, track by track, what to solo over them, what to try, what might work and why. So it's great templates as you go along in your lead guitar journey and I'll send it to you for free. It's my jam track coach. Just click on that link below. So let me show you a couple scale positions to demonstrate these techniques. Right here, you probably know your basic box shape at the 12th position. And you have three E notes in that scale that you really want to try to keep going back to resolving your licks to. And we'll also use the E minor pentatonic scale shape. That's one position back. That's this one. And that one has three root notes as well you want to take note of here, here, and up on the high E string. So the first thing we want to do to dress up this scale is let's add the ninth or the second. In the key of E, the second is an F sharp. Play it up high, it becomes the ninth. So let's add the F sharp note to the scale here and here. And that's a great one because that works 99.9% .9 of the time, no matter if you're in minor key especially, um, no matter what you're playing over, that note is gonna work. So it's a great note to add for a couple reasons. Because number one is it sounds so good. That ninth adds a lot of drama. I use it all the time. I love the way that it sounds. Um, especially when you resolve it back to the root. Keep in mind it's a whole step after the root. So that's an easy way to find it. So whenever you play it, just go back a whole step. You're right on your root note. So it makes resolving licks so easy and sounds so good. There's great things you could do with that note. For instance, you could bend from it. Like I'm bending the F sharp to the G. So it gives you that three note per string. Like I said, you could resolve it to that E note. Also, you could slide, slide to the 15th, back to the 14th. It's a great way to use that note. Same way up here. You could slide from that F sharp to the G to your root. Or slide back. Remember, if you slide back a whole step from that ninth or F sharp, you're on that E note. It makes it so easy. And now, you're in right in that other position I showed you. So you could kind of move back and forth between both positions. But it's such a great note to really throw in there. You could do, now because you have three notes per string, you could do, you know, licks like that where I'm pulling off 15, 14, 12. Kind of Santana-esque, right? And you can do that same thing on that G string, 12, 11, 9. Another cool thing I do with that is licks where you're playing off, like I bar the 12th fret with my first finger, use an upstroke on the 12th fret B string, then downstroke on that 9th, the F sharp, 14th fret high E, then pull off to the 12th. So real quick, you get the ninth, 
and the root in there. That's a good one because you could then do the same thing but do it on the 15th fret. You know, do it on the 17th fret. And you can mix them together. Please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us. And we so appreciate it. It helps us to keep bringing the content, right? Um, leave a comment in the YouTube description box below. Let us know how you like this lesson. Let us know what lessons you'd like to see. If you like the video, click the like button, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And uh, thank you so much for your support. So let's put on the jam track. This is our first device that we're using to spice up the scales, right? We'll put on the track. I'll talk you through it and you can hear how the sounds in context. I'll just stay in these two positions and talk you through some of those licks we've just played. Let's start on the nine. You can hear how that ninth adds that, right? You got that nice resolution to the root and the drama from that note. There's some of those hammer licks I talked about. that fast Santana sounding riff. Here I used it here on the G string, 11 to 12 fret. Sliding from that ninth or second to that flat third. Whole step back is our root. Let's look at another device that'll be easy to. Um, incorporate into your lead playing. So the minor pentatonic scale has five notes, right? And most Western music scales are 12 notes. So there's seven notes that you're not playing. Well, you could play those notes if you use them as slurs or kind of passing tones into scalar notes. And they really spice up your playing. So let's try that. So now are we not only going to add that ninth, but we're going to add a lot of other notes that you're probably not playing, right? If you look at that minor pentatonic scale again, right? So you're playing every note at the 12th fret. Well, what if you take the notes at the 11th fret and just slide them in? Like that E flat note is very much not in that scale, but you can use it. You could use all these notes if you bring them in in passing and resolve them on strong scale notes, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right? Now obviously, if I play this E flat note at the 11th fret, it's very out there, it's very dissonant, and it doesn't sound very good. But if I quickly slide it from the 11th to the 12th, it adds a cool little bit of interest. Notice I'm going from the passing tone into the scale note. If I do it the other way and you try to slide into a outside note like that, it's not going to sound as good, this one in particular. See, it's the ear hears the dissonance. If you do it fast like that, the ear only hears something, something that could be kind of cool, but doesn't have time to really pick the dissonance as if you hold it like that. So go into this, try it on the B string. Of course that sounds good. That's the ninth we were doing that before, right? You do it in the D string. Now this note here, the F note, very outside, right? If you play it by itself and hold it, but you can use that F note to sound kind of cool. I did a quick hammer and pull up. And the ear again, here's something cool. Doesn't have the time to pick up the dissonance. Right? So you can use all those notes in passing. Going. Some of those notes are in other scales and modes, but if you're just looking at pentatonics now, it's a good place to start and just yank them in. Just half step, slide them in.
spices that really pack a wallop to really, you know, add some spice to your pentatonic scales that anyone can implement quickly into their playing, try it. Put on a jam track and just get lost in it. And you will quickly see how your pentatonic playing will take on a whole new life. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Um, please remember to subscribe to the channel. That really helps us to keep bringing the content. And uh, don't forget, if you'd like some more jam tracks, good sounding tracks that are wide open, click on that link below. I'll send you my jam track coach free eBooks, scale diagrams, and also killer sounding jam tracks. Thank you so much for your support over the years. So appreciate it. Keep putting those guitars in your hands every day. And remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care and rock up.